Good morning, girlfriend. Hello, darling. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. We've got a great show today. Oh. It's just turning. I forgot to turn my phone off. We got a great show today. And uh, just so that you, everyone knows, before we get started, I wanted to let you know that as, we're not going to do the show next week. We're going to do it after I move in. This is my new place in mm. Las Cruces. Beautiful. And this will be the new studio behind the uh, uh, pillars there where you see the windows. This will be our new studio. So we'll be doing a first class, high resolution, state of the art production of uh, the Dog Connection show and all the segments. So Colleen, you'll, oh, you'll be seeing me there oh. the next time we, we come on. <laughs> Kathy, we're so cool. Oh yeah. my gosh, we're yeah. so cool. <laughs> okay. So our show today is about resources, right? And yes. gifts. And tell us about what we're going to see today. So Kathy, what I know is so excited for today because I get these questions all the time and I like to be creative. And so we're going to show some pictures. We're going to show some websites. And then I'm going to talk through a few things from the, what I've helped families do or what I've seen them do with, with memorialization. And some of the things that we're going to talk through with memorialization are going to be even some things that you can do now. Um, and, and so I'm, I'm so excited because all of these are these personal, beautiful things that people don't know that they can do. And right. they're, it's, it's really interesting and exciting now as to all the ways that people can memorialize all the tangible trinkets or whatever that people can get that uh, are all about their pet and honor in a life they shared. Right, right. Yeah. I, you know, when, when I think about it in retrospect, mostly the people feel that what they have available is to have their dog cream or their, their pet cremated and then put them into an urn. And that's about as far as it goes for the most part. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but there are so many other ways. I have a, a locket that I have my husband's hair. In, yes. the, in the locket, you know, yeah. so th those are things that you can have. Oh, we got somebody on here already. Absolutely. Oh, hey, good morning, Larry. Hi, Larry. Hi. <laughs> the Cape Crusaders, yeah. I love it. Yeah, so um, what do we want to start with first off? You also today, we're going to, what we're going to do is honor uh, of a friend of mine who her dog passed away. So we'll oh. honor at the end of the show. Yes, for sure. For sure. Hey, Kathy, um, we were looking at all the pictures that I sent over. Did you happen to pull up the rock? Because I think that might be a good one that we can start uh, with. No, I didn't do the rock, but let me look here and see. I don't see a rock. Oh, the rock of the dog. So there's a rock on there that says Harry's Garden or Harry's Pond. I'm sorry. Harry's uh, Pond. No, no. On I don't the email? See it. No, I'm sorry. I don't see yeah. it. Okay. No worries. Okay. Please. We can talk through that though. Um, but yeah, from uh, yeah, the rock that I was just mentioning, let's talk about that. I want to start there. And while I'm talking about it, can you pull up the picture with the, with the gold um, little nose print? Beautiful. Okay. So I have so many people that I've helped that we really wanted to take the unique elements of an animal and to create things with them. So I want you to look at this piece. And on the left-hand side is the dog or the animal's nose. I don't know what this one was. The animal's nose. And in the other heart is mommy's thumbprint. Oh. And isn't that so? Oh, so nice. what it is, yeah. noses for animals are their, are their thumbprints. There's no two noses alike. Yeah. And so those are two individual no two in the world are alike except for those two and they put them on a charm isn't oh, that just nice. yes gorgeous yes, i love it yeah oh i love that piece and i actually have on i made sure well, i generally have it on every day the necklace i have on right now is the uh is the actual paw print Let's see if i can hold it up yeah yeah there i see go. that yeah very Oops. nice yeah so it's the actual paw print of miko so tons of things that we can do with the paws and the noses which i just love yeah. because it is their unique marking. So the rock I was mentioning, and I'm sorry the picture didn't come through, the rock, 
oh my gosh, my big Harry, who is my big old flat coat retriever. Mm -hmm. I swear to you, after he would get a beautiful grooming job, he would come home, he'd run outside and he'd go stand in the dirty, nasty garden pond. <laughs> He just, he I so standing. identify with it. <laughs> Who, what pet person doesn't? It's like, seriously, I just yeah. paid for you to have a grooming and you're standing in that exactly. nasty, murky yeah. water. Yeah. And Kathy, he would look at me and I swear to you, he laughed. I yeah. swear to you, he laughed. Uh -huh. So after he died, we actually had a rock made. It said Harry's Pond. And it had his actual paw print on it. Oh, and so nice. it lays right out by the pond. And so it's one of those pieces. And this is what I this is what I tell people when we're creating items like this. I said, I want you to think about something that when you look at it, it's gonna, it's gonna cause you to remember something. And when the time is right, it's gonna make you smile. Yeah. And it's gonna yeah. make you or or you'll go, oh. You'll mm -hmm. do that thing too and go, I remember all the times he stood in that pond. But now what I do is I laugh and I think, yeah. man, what a great time he was having. What a great time. But yeah. by having that paw print on there, because then what would happen is we'd have to stand outside with the hose and wash off paw prints, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So we just captured it and yeah. memorialized it. I got to tell you, there was another family I was working with, Conan. I'll never forget the dog. Conan was his name. And- countless stories this family told me about Conan, who they believe his favorite food was pizza because they they told me countless stories about how many times he pulled the pizza box off the counter and ate all the pizza. You <laughs> yeah. know, so they would all grab their yeah, pizza yeah. and go into the living room and eat. <clears throat> so when we made his rock, we put his name and we put a piece of pizza Very and it good. was priceless. Yeah. So very good. We've got the one, just, you know, little things. I love it when, I, and I've got them all over my yard with one of the flagstones, for instance, that we have, it's got Mike, the dog, his name was Mike, the dog, Mike, the dog, Ellie and Crisco. It's got all of them. That was a chapter. That was a chapter in our life. And so I loved putting everybody on a chapter on a, on a, on a piece that, you know, was symbolic of a chapter. Mm -hmm. And so that's at one point under a flower. And, and I've got another one, our, our kitty cat, his nickname is Rudy Pooh. And so there's a Rudy Pooh rock out there. Now here's the cool thing about Rudy Pooh. Rudy Pooh's still alive, but there's an area out in the garden that Rudy Pooh likes to lay. And so I thought, man, I want to make a rock and I want to put that right there. And it's got his little paw print on it too. And how we do those little paw print things, Kathy is so cool because all I do is I pick his little paw up, grab my phone, chirp, chirp, take a picture and I okay. send that in and it's the sweetest, cutest little rock that says Rudy Pooh and his little pop print on it. And it's right in his little special spot. Yeah. So, well, you know, I'm, now stuff. that you're saying that I'm thinking to myself, what is it that's very distinguishable about Charlie? Yeah. And what would I want to see? Because that's what you would be thinking about now. You For know? sure. Well, the For thing sure. I think that I would go with is having just a picture of Charlie with this bone, with this cookie in his mouth. If he knows that he's going to go outside, he'll search and he'll go through all of his toys and everything until he finds that special cookie that he really likes. It's a certain kind of a biscuit. And then he likes to go outside and the first person he sees, he drops it in front of them as, their, as a gift to them. So it, it represents his present, his gift to other people. Yes. So I think that would be just perfect be to perfect. have the bone and just his his nose. and perfect. That part. Yeah. I love it. Kathy, you know what this is? And I always Always tell people this when we are thinking about just like what you did with Charlie. What I always tell people to do, and I know I've said this in past shows, I've always said, think about their dash, think about the things that they love yeah. to do and that you remember. And you just said, I remember he drops, and, and it is about him. It's not like you remember because he's still with you. Yeah. He drops a biscuit. And so, how perfect to put a picture of that biscuit <laughs> yeah. on his piece. You know, yeah, that's yeah. what that's about. It's those little things that, and and I always loved it with people too when they would, you know, whether it's a rock or it's a or it's an engraving that we would put on an urn or whatever. I would say to them, "Tell me, tell me when you think about." I'll use Greta because I'll never forget her mommy saying this to me. I said, "Tell me about Greta and what you will think about when you think about Greta heretofore." And and her mommy said this. My little Peter Pan mixed with Dennis the Menace. 
<laughs> she never grew up and she was yeah. always ornery. Yeah. And so that's what we put on their little rock on her little yeah. piece that went out in the yard. And she wasn't buried out there. She just went out and helped mommy garden. And she was ornery when she helped mommy garden. Mm. And so that's what we put on there. And, and that's what I love is when you, instead of just thinking about a birth date or a gotcha date and a death date, I want, I want you to think about the dash. I want you to think about the in-between and say, yeah. what am I going to remember? What am I going to remember? Mm -hmm. Now, you mentioned your urn. I got to show you another one. I'm going to hang this up. Oops. Oh, yeah. Very Isn't nice. it beautiful? Yeah. So I have one of these that I wear. And um, much like you, I don't put ashes in mine. Some people like to put the cremated ashes, but I'll tell you what I put in mine. My little piece like this has the hair or the fur, because you know, Anna, some dogs have mm -hmm. hair and some dogs have fur. It has the hair or the fur or the whisker of all my living and deceased animals. So I always have them with me. So oh, everybody has a little, nice. yep. Yeah. And I just, this little end comes off and, and I just, just put it in there. Yep, yeah. I just add it to it. So every time a new baby comes in, a new baby comes in. And that way, when I wear this thing, eh, they're near yeah. my heart. They're yeah. always near my heart. And you I know, those that. are great conversation pieces too, oh, because people always yes. want to know, oh, what is that? And then of course you yes. get to tell your story without yes. having to intrude on anyone. Exactly. <laughs> and you know what I find interesting? And I'm sure you know this too. Let it be anything pet related. And it's like all bets are off. People are going to ask. They don't yeah. care. When it's about an animal, it's like, hey, listen, you're one of me. I want to know about that necklace. Yeah. And boom. I tell them. Absolutely tell yeah, them. Yeah, but then of course sometimes you run into the people that don't care about animals and oh. then they 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 think it's stupid. They don't like right, it, right. you know. Well, it's just a dog, it's just a cat, it's yeah. it's just an animal. Let me tell you yes, something. Because, you know what? We did a show yesterday and it was about empathy and that subject. And we re we identified that the reason that happens is because those type of people identify with a pet as objects. Mm -hmm. They don't identify mm -hmm. with them as living beings. Yep. Yep. And you know what? Here, here's where I, a long time ago, because after I opened that little first pet funeral home, man, whew, did I receive some nasty mail. And here's what I, here's what I, I, I came to realize. I don't get them and they don't get me. And so we're at an impasse and it doesn't matter yeah, because I'm right. not meant for you. I don't understand you. And here, but here's what I say. And in this world that we live in right now, it's okay to agree to disagree. And mm -hmm. it's okay to think something different. And if you don't care for animals, then I'm going to respect your opinion. I don't get it, but I can mm -hmm. still respect it just as much as I ask them to respect mine. And I'm not going to ask you to change your opinion. And I don't want you to change my opinion. That's not why we're in this. And let me tell you something, Kathy. I make no part of my being open to, to debating are animals good or animals not good. That mm -hmm. no part of my being says I am open to that conversation and I will shut it down now because it's not open for debate. Yeah. I respect where you're coming from. I want you to respect where I'm coming from. Just like the whole subject of do pets go to heaven? Yeah. I want mine and I want I, I and you're okay to have your opinion and I'm gonna right. have mine. Okay. Unless it's talking yeah. about politics, which is totally right. taboo. I won't talk politics. No. Not politics or religion. There. Yeah. Oh, not going oh, not there. Going there. Yeah. Joe, I totally agree with you. You're cracking me up. Oh. I totally agree with you. Wait, yes, wait. I adore my dogs and they're treated better than my daughter. Isn't that funny? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well. Yeah, th there's a reason for that too, because um, they're there to, the dogs are there to give you love. I they're not there love. to argue with you or, or anything. Uh, yeah. Okay, you know what? So what, okay, I, go I gotta ahead. tell you something. I have told so many funeral directors, cause you know, that's where I started in the human funeral industry. Mm -hmm. And they, they've said, you know, can, are you coming back over to the human side? And, and I said, let me tell you something. There are two words that are never used to describe relationships with animals as they are with people. And that's complicated and estranged. Those words are never used in describing a relationship with an animal. And mm -hmm. I would rather stay in a world where it, if every animal lover gave two words that described it, described their bond, it would be unconditional love. And I would rather stay in that world. Yeah, That's Here's a beautiful a third, world. 
Here's a third one. Divorce. <laughs> right? <laughs> you don't divorce yourself from your pets. <laughs> no. Oh, my God. That's priceless. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Give me another one. I want to talk about another one. Pull you want to have up. the picture or do you want... Uh, yeah, um, bring me... Uh, bring me a picture and then I'm probably going to take you to a website because I think I know which picture. Okay. Yep, I know you're going to bring me to this one. Okay. Okay. So guess what's happening right now? You can make diamonds out of ashes. <gasps> really? Yes. Yes. Wow. So here, and I tell you what, I had a, uh, this was a veterinary technician and man, I'll never forget the piece that she was doing. She was actually creating a bit of a piece like this one. She was actually creating a mommy's ring. And so with every animal that passed away, she had another little diamond made and it continued to build out her mommy's ring. She was a single woman. She didn't have skin children. All she had was fur kids. And so for every fur kid that died, it went into her mommy's ring. Did you did you pull up the Eternova website? I can't remember if that was one of them we had on there, Kathy. Um, Eternova.com. E-T-E-R-N-E-V-A. Let me see. E-T. I thought you had. E-T-E-R. N-E-V-A. Yeah, I have that oh, one. Yeah. Beautiful. I thought you did. So let's pull that one up because that's that's a, that was a representation from this website. And here's what I love about my friends over at Eternova is when, when you begin a relationship with them, oh, I just love this site. When you begin a relationship with them, and I am going to call it that, when you begin a relationship with a turnova, what happens is, is, is you send in your ashes and, and they, they begin to create a storyline for you about the process. And so all along the way, they're keeping you posted all along the way. They're giving updates into their social platforms. We helped a, a veterinarian and her doggy's name was Russ. And Russ had some, Russ had a, his favorite toy was a blue toy. And so mommy made a blue diamond with a, oh, how look nice. at that. And it was spectacular. Just spectacular. Wow. Yeah. I've got a girlfriend right now um, from the West Coast and she, uh, her father just passed and she's getting, she's getting a diamond made and I cannot wait to see it. And guys, let's remember this. It is a diamond. It's going to price like a diamond. It's going to take time because they're pressing that carbon, right? Mm -hmm. There's Adele. There's my friend Adele. Mm. That Adele. Adele. Isn't she precious? They just did a stint on a shark tank. So if you want to watch some really oh, exciting. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yep. They just had a stint on shark tank. Uh, but, but, oh man, they do beautiful work. Just beautiful work. And uh, so that, you know, for the one that you say, what do I do? Or, you know, how am I going to, uh, how do I just eternally, you know, have these, have these precious loves and these babes with me? Beautiful thing to do. Beautiful. Love it. Now I tell you what, we're going to segue into another site here because to create a diamond is going to take just a tidbit of those ashes. Okay. So let's just say about Oh, maybe two tablespoons, three tablespoons, a quarter of a cup. Okay. Okay. So it's going to take that. So in your head, you might be thinking, huh, what, uh, what might I do with the rest of those? If I don't, you know, I've got the thing that I want to wear. Um, what am I going to do with the rest of them? So I want you to pull up, let your love grow. Okay. That's it. I got it. Yep. Wait, we got a comment here too from Joe. She says, oh, uh, I want this. to do this with my fur kids yeah. ashes too. Although I dread the day I lose them. My jazzy is 14. She's pretty blind, but she's happy. My jazzy's ashes are to be placed mm -hmm. in my coffin with me when I die. Love Ditto. that. And I love Joe. I love the fact that you're planning on that. Make sure I'm, I'm going to give you a little lesson here. Okay. The fact that you want Jazzy's ashes in your in your casket with you when you go, I want you to, you've either got to make sure that you've got your funeral pre-planned, pre don't put it in your will, okay, because your will is going to be right after you're buried, all right? So I need you to make sure that you go to your funeral home and you begin the pre-planning paperwork. And, and then you also tell, like my husband and I, we both know that that's going to happen too. And the kids know, our, my stepkids know this too. Um, all three of them know this. So we, we... We, we have to communicate this, okay? Don't leave it to chance. Don't leave it to the will. You've got to pre-plan and you got to tell those around you. Okay, now I want to tell you something interesting about Joe's comment and my comment. 
there, this is not, this is not, uh, I'm going to use the word legal. This is not legal to do because in most cemeteries, literally like 99.9% .9 of all cemeteries, their grounds are dedicated to human remains. Okay. So to put a pet in there is not how their grounds are set up, but I will tell you, there is not a funeral director out there that, that won't help out. Okay. okay. But you need to know that you can't leave it to chance. You cannot leave it to chance. You've got to make sure that you've got that called out and somebody knows what your wishes are. Um, and I've, I've worked with so many families that they didn't, they didn't spell that out. They didn't tell somebody around them and it didn't happen. Hmm. So don't leave it to chance, Joe. All right. Make sure somebody knows. Is, is there some kind of a form that's a standard form that you could possibly bring to uh, your uh, uh, ugh, to the funeral, funeral director? Yep. Yeah. Yep. So what I okay. want you to do is I want you to, and just, you. I, I think most, most funeral home sites, you can download it. It's called a guide to planning ahead. Okay. okay, good. She's going to do it with her funeral home and her, she, her daughter knows. Beautiful. Fill out your guide to planning ahead. Oh my gosh, I can reach over here in my file and my mother has everything down to the, to, down to the gnats behind on what she wants, which is beautiful <laughs> because then we don't have to think about it. It's the perfect thing to do. You yeah. have to. We plan for every other event in our life. Why would you not plan for your final party? Yes, Why would you not? Right. And let me, I'm going to, I'm going to, man, I'm going to go on a rant here for a minute, Kathy, okay. because you and I are two peas in a pot on this. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let me tell you something. When I die, not if, by the way, did you all hear that? I did say when I die, because it's a when, not an if. When I die, my final party, my final party will be the most amazing fundraising event you've ever been to in your life to fundraise for the animals. And that's going to be, there's going to be a ticket to get in. Okay. You got to have a ticket to get in my funeral. Oh, cool. Yes, ma'am. Your ticket will be a donation to whatever shelters we, we've we picked in whatever area of the country we are. It will be a donation back there. And and when you come, because if, you, if you've been invited and you got a ticket, okay, then you're also going to bring a donation item, which could also be more cash. Oh, Why I would not? That. Yeah. Kathy, why wouldn't I do that? That's what I've done my entire life yeah. is to is to fundraise for animals. Yeah. That's what I do. And so why would I not take the opportunity to have my final party on this on this God loving earth? Why wouldn't I use that final party for my very last fundraise? And maybe yeah. what happens is, is all that money goes into a uh, goes into a, some sort of a fund that that then will support animals for, for, for as long as it can. Yeah. Why not that? Here you go, you guys, that's my responsibility. Yeah. I want you know it to what? be we, my responsibility. We come up with a show that is how to plan your own fundraiser for a death. Part. How do <sighs> right? do that? Let's, yes. Let's plan Girl, can I, can I tell you what my funeral is going to be? Yeah, sure. On, on one side of the building where my funeral is going to be is going to be wine and cheese. Cause okay. I rolled like that a little bit. Here's how I saw marijuana okay. on the other side. No, <laughs> and beer oh. and, and pizza. <laughs> and there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Why would I not do that? Yeah. And right. animals are going to be there. And here's what else is going to happen. We are going to have the local shelter come and their only job is going to be if, if, if somebody wants to sit down and, and drink their wine and eat their cheese, then I need one of the shelter workers there that will take the animal and take them for a walk. Yeah. Cause I need you to be comfortable. Yeah. Right? I love Joe. I think Joe and I are, are sisters. Look, uh, I love that. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> People plan ahead, man, plan ahead. Know that that's what you're going to do. Okay. So Kathy, go back to let your love grow. So, Okay, now you've taken a bit and maybe you made your diamond. Oh, Joe's coming to my funeral. Love that, Joe. <laughs> Love that. Yeah. Oh my God. Joe. Is it gonna be virtual? Oh, honey, we're gonna go all over because if I can cast a really large net to do fundraising, you know right now I will. Yeah, right, right. I'll do yeah. an ask from the grave. I yeah. will do an ask from the grave for uh -huh. sure. Okay, so let me, I want to educate you on something. People, how many times have you heard about people that have spread ashes? Okay. They go out and spread ashes, right? Right. Let me tell you something. Okay. Let's, let's also talk about what ashes are. 
ashes, cremated, cremated remains are merely bone fragments. Okay. That's uh -huh. it. They're bone fragments. Many people believe since they're bone fragments that they might be bone meal. Okay. Which is a good fertilizer, right? right. No, no. Answer to that is no. Answer to that is heck no. Here's the deal. Cremated ashes are way too high in, in sodium for the ground. Okay. And I'm just going to use probably a few wrong words here in descriptor, but just so we paint the picture. Um, oh, mom just jumped in. Yeah. Mom's not coming to my funeral. Yep. She, she's <laughs> nope. 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 But Joe's coming. So I got that. We got that. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. Let's go. And back. I'll be so, there or you'll be yes. at mine either right? way. Yeah. Right. So, so they're not good for the ground. So, okay. So now we want to make them good for the ground. Okay. So this product called let your love grow, which is my friend, um, which is my friend, Bob Jenkins. And I love Bob. I love Bob Jenkins. This product is genius. So what happens with this product, let your love grow is it neutralizes cremated remains Hey, um, Joe, yeah, I'm here in the States, but I tell you what, I love Sydney, Australia. I just did a speaking tour over there. I did, I did, and I hopefully am going back, so I'll make sure you know about it. But, um, okay, back to Let Your Love Grow. So what this product does is it neutralizes the cremated remains, it neutralizes the ashes, and it now makes it good for the ground. And Bob has amazing videos on here of where, where they've done a planting and they've used the Let Your Love Grow mixed with the cremated remains and how much, how nutrient rich it is. Okay. Okay. So and you I can love grow your, you can grow a garden, you can grow whatever yes. this is soil. It's not because yes. I've yes. seen the, the bio urns, which are planted tree. But I haven't seen this where it's actually made into a soil that you can yes. use. Now that's, that's very that's very very interesting. Oh, it's fascinating. God. And we've it's got because every time you would have something, it would be like uh, the 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 animals are now coming back to new to give us nutrition, to give us uh, um, yeah oxygen, give us yeah. I love that idea. Isn't it beautiful? And, yeah. and the thing I love about it too is our animals are so organic in nature anyway. Right. And so it's kind of this you know ashes to ashes, dust to dust, back to the earth kind of a a process. And, and Bob has just, oh, he has just done amazing work in the creation of this product and the amazing things that it's doing. So for everybody out there, maybe you've got those, maybe you've got those urns sitting around and you're thinking, oh my gosh, what, what am I going to do with this? Or, you know, maybe I'm a gardener and you want to, you want to give back to the earth. The, the Let Your Love Grow product is yeah. perfect for that. Yeah. Yeah, I put a link. Perfect. I put a link to it in the description, you guys. And not in the description in the comments. Yes. Okay. Yes. I so love let's see. that. Joe says, "Oh yes, please do. I would love to meet you. Oh, she wants to meet you when you come to Australia." Yeah, Joe. My goodness, it is what probably ten o'clock at night, eleven o'clock at night for your time, right? You got to be in the middle of the night right now, if I <laughs> if I remember my timing right. Jeez, Louise. Okay, so we've got Let Your Love Grow. Um, go to the one with the uh, paw print made into the embroidery. I just stumbled across uh, okay. this one. It's okay. on that Creature I Connect. Got it. Yeah, I got okay. it. Look at that. She. Uh, this is. I stumbled upon this Comfort Connect site the other day. Wow, she's got some really cool stuff. And I know you're going to pull up another um, another product here with the the glass pieces that has the hair in it. Um, okay, is that this one? Yes. Yes. She's got some really cool stuff. And it's just... Some, is this all handmade? It, it, it appears to me that it's handmade by this lovely lady, and I think her name is Rachel. Um, but it appears to me that she is she is part of the artist in some of these things. So okay. I, I was just digging the the uniqueness. And uh, Kathy, I, I forgot to send this one to you. There was a beautiful story yesterday morning on the Today Show, and it's uh, it was a, a story about a company called Sweater Hounds, I believe was the name of it, where they actually took a picture of your pet 
and put it on the front of a sweater or embroidered it on a, on a pair of sweats or put it on a pillow or a blanket. Oh my gosh. It was just gorgeous. I went out and, um, stock the site. Well, actually let's call it research. What is it? Sweater hound? Sweater hound. Yeah. Look and, uh, man, I bookmarked that one. Cause I, I started doing some Christmas shopping on that yesterday. Sweater hound. I'm quite yep. sure that was the name of it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the, and it's got one of my all time favorite pictures. Oh, uh, the little black doggy. Yeah. There oh we go. yeah. Look at that. Oh, <gasps> My goodness. I'm telling you what, I'm Christmas shopping. Look at those sweats right below there. Yeah. And these are, and you can see they've got the embroider on it, which is you can do your exact animal. I just love those things. Just priceless. Oh, they got the pillows. Yeah. That's yeah. Great. yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I'd forgot to send that to you yesterday. So you've got, um, now you've got some really cool ones. So pop that one down in there. And then on that creature comfort site, there was another, oh, I showed you, we did the necklace on that. So we're good. Um, yeah, just beautiful stuff. You know, and here, the other thing I want to share too, Kathy, sometimes I get people that, that get really, um, they kind of get some, you know, some nervousness about me. I don't know, you know, an urn and I don't know if I'm an urn girl and how do I buy an urn? Man, I, I shut down that conversation. I'm like, listen, if he was a, if he was a treat, you, men you mentioned Charlie and how he loved that little bone. And, mm -hmm. you know, if they're, if they love their treats, which my goodness, how many dogs don't use their treat jar. That's yeah. a beautiful urn to use. And think about it as you look at that treat jar that you've reached your hand into a gazillion times. Yeah, right. Exactly. How, yeah. <laughs> how cool to look up on your shelf and there's their treat jar yeah. that they get to be in forever. I mean, what a what a cool memory for a dog to say, oh, I get in, I get to now go live in the treat jar uh -huh. for eternity. So it it's use things that are that are memorable. And, and it's not like things an urn or, or, or stuff like that has to be, you know, designated urn, you know, you, I, I, gosh, I've shared a picture with you before where my brother, um, um, did a loaded sh shotgun shells with his dog's ashes. You know, he was a hunting dog that was yeah. so perfect for him. So there's just really cool things that you, you think about. I gotta tell you, there was this family that I worked with and, um, they had, it was two daddies and they had a beautiful little Bashan. I'll never forget him. Beautiful little Bashan. And uh, they had saved every one of his scarves from grooming mm -hmm. since he was a little puppy till he was a, a, an old boy. And uh, my mother-in-law is an amazing seamstress. She took every one of those scarves from grooming and made a quilt. And oh. it was gorgeous oh how Absolutely. nice yeah isn't that so special Plus it, it has the scent on there still yes yeah. yes yeah. Hopefully, Just... they, hopefully she didn't wash them <laughs> nope 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 no nope. make sure we kept them all as is grimy yeah. as they might be but we kept them as is so there's really cool things yeah and um lots of really interesting oh she this girl i tell you what she's got an amazing site you know what and if you scroll down through this Memorial space flights, you can send ashes up onto spaceships now and they will release them out into, out into space. Hmm. There are beautiful, I want to talk about this, the second one, there are beautiful biodegradable pieces that can house the urn or the ashes, I'm sorry, that can house the ashes and as you go out into, you know, the ocean or the lake or wherever you're at, it makes a really pretty presentation when you, when you take them and toss that piece out into the water uh -huh. and, and now it's a, now you have an opportunity for, for a beautiful service to go with it. Number and three, fireworks you can put them in fireworks. Number four, I am hearing this happening, happening tons and tons and tons. Wow. I have, wow. Yes. Really? Yes. Now you've got tattoo artists that are putting part of the ashes into the tattoo, uh, into the tattoo itself, into the really? ink. Yeah. Isn't oh that cool? Oh my goodness. Now I will tell you another one. Let's stop on the tattoo one second. So there's a company I, you know, I come from the human funeral industry and there is a company that is now, and I don't know how, so I'm just going to give you the way I do know how, but I don't want to know the details yeah. where they are actually able to work with the funeral home that they can they can get these tattoos and they can preserve them. Really? I'm just going to leave it at that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So other wow. ideas. 
other, but you know, the other thing I love is how many people I, yeah, at tattoo I and and taking their paw print. We've talked about getting their paw print. I have so many people that are like, get a good one because I'm taking it to my tattoo artist. And then they pull up their shirt and and all up their back are the little dog prints or all down their leg are the paw prints. I had one lady that I worked with. Oh my God, I'll never forget Cherokee as long as I live. And she actually, she made the comment a gazillion times. She said, Cherokee will always leave a paw print on my heart. And so that's where she got Cherokee's paw print tattooed yeah. right on her heart. It was gorgeous. Absolutely mm. gorgeous. And I had another friend of mine. And I and I'm gonna guess there's some of our listeners that know about this. Man, he went down, he found this this amazing tattoo artist in Vegas. And um it, it, Roscoe was the dog's name, and Dachshund. And it it looked like a painted portrait on Jean's arm. It was gorgeous. So I know there's tattoo artists out there that will that will actually do it for you know the actual picture. Okay, mm -hmm. go back to that site because there were some other okay. cool things. Taking them on, uh, taking them on travel and scattering in in certain places that were you know special. Um, the the hair keepsakes we already talked about that, and there they are. There's a few of those, or the one that you have on, the one that I have. Turn it into a record. I didn't even know you could do this. What? I, I what? know. So thing. clearly it's pressed so into that vinyl. Life, have your loved one's cremated remains embedded into the vinyl record with the Isn't sound of awesome? their voice or favorite song. Wow. Yeah. Listen to the cracks and pops. Your loved ones remain to help you <clears throat> embrace their sound once again. Wow. Isn't that cool? There's yeah. our diamonds again. I'm telling you, a turn yeah. of a, that's my girl. Artwork. Oh my gosh. There are artists out there that will take the ashes, mix it with the paint, and paint the portrait of the animal. These wow. pieces, and of course, then it gives it a really 3D textured feel, and they are gorgeous. Absolutely and gorgeous. I like this, Sun catchers. Too. Sun yeah. catchers, yeah. Aren't they beautiful? I can't wait Some to talk about reef. memory glass. You can be a reef. Yep. Seen those, and they are gorgeous. Absolutely huggable gorgeous. urns. I like mm -hmm. that that term. Huggable yes. urns. Yeah. Yep. yep. We've got a young a lady. Or, I yeah. could see it as a stuffed animal too. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Those are those are so cool. There's my friend Bob again with Become a Plant. Let it's Let Your Love Grow, yeah. and it is uh, just just beautiful. You can turn it to a stone. There's tons of ways to turn them into to stones, and we're going to look at touchstones here in a minute too, because those are. So cool. She's got great stuff. She has yeah, got really yeah, cool like stuff. Yeah. Okay. So pull up memory glass. Let's talk about these guys for a minute. Cause I, I love my friend Kim's company. There we go. Okay. There you go. Look at that. So you can take the ashes and you can blow them into these beautiful, beautiful glasses. And this particular, this is a, another friend of mine, Kim Price. And what I love about Kim's company is that they can actually take the ashes of six animals and can blow them together. Really? Yes. So you have them all together. Oh, yep. that's nice. Yep. That's yep. Very, I gotta, very nice. I got to tell you a really cool story. So Kim's daughter got married and I happened to be on Kim's Facebook page looking at some of the wedding photos. And she had two of those round orbs that it was clear something had been blown in there. And then the kids' wedding rings were on top. Okay. Mm. His was on one and hers was on the other. And so I, I messaged her and I said, Hey, help me understand what the, you know, the pieces were. Cause they were just beautiful. Here's what it was. The kids had gotten married outside. And so Kim had picked up some dirt from where each of them, oops, from where each of them stood taking their vows mm -hmm. and she had those pieces made with that dirt of where they started their time together of their vows. Isn't that gorgeous? Yeah, that's gorgeous. Yes. So I meaningful. Question. I have a question here now. I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, you know, when a pet passes away, do people give gifts I know they send cards, sympathy cards, but do they ever give gifts or, or join together and get a gift certificate for people that have lost their pet? Uh, some people will start a fundraiser, but I wonder, mm -hmm. is, is that a common practice to give someone a gift? 
You know, I think it's becoming more common, Kathy. And, and, what, and I would, they, what would they give? So, for instance, I had a, a, a product one time. It was called a pet loss, um, pet loss care package, I think is what it was called, a pet loss care package. Now, and in it, it was beautiful. It was a little reading book. It was a candle um, and a couple other things. I can't even remember now. This was a thousand years ago. Um, but I think beautiful things like that, you know, if you go out and, and for instance, when I send flowers, I make sure that I find the florist who can create animal faces out of carnations. And so oh, I always, okay. very they're beautiful. Good. They're just yeah. beautiful. So from flowers, I've got a, another colleague of mine that will actually put together a, um, a care package, which is all the ingredients to make a pot of soup. And so huh. then she'll take that over, which how perfect, you yeah. know, you, my, my friend Kim here in Dallas, she brings me food. She brings me a, a bottle of wine. Okay. Let's face it. Perfect yeah. gift. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so it's all those things that we think about doing when people pass away, people, people. Yeah. And so now it's like, well, why wouldn't I take my husband and I, we had a, a family here in our neighborhood a couple months ago, and that's exactly what we did. We took them flowers and we took a, a casserole, yeah. exactly what we would do if, if it's a people, people, you know, but, but people are starting to, to kind of say, Hey, listen, this one's a real loss too. Let's treat it the same way. Let's take food over. Let's yeah, take it. Yeah. Yeah. Care package over, you know, let's, let's check yeah. on them. Let's yeah. speak to you. Yeah. Yeah. I think there, I wonder if there is any websites I'll have to research that, but I thought you might know, but I do like the idea of having a pet care package, you know, yeah. how yeah. to get over your grief and then maybe having a journal. I personally, like to keep a journal after my pet passes away because I, I every day for the first month after my Maggie, who when she was eight, to eight after 18 years, I kept a journal of all my feelings and I forced myself to think of only good things of, that I had with her and it helped me get through the pain. You know, so it yeah. was it, like it was a 30 day journal. Yeah. Yeah. So well, think live. about that, you know, because like celebration of life. Yeah. Yeah, totally. And, you know, the things that that are meaningful to you that right. but would Just, go into your care package. Yeah. yeah. And those are beautiful. I, I, I always I always tell veterinary clinics, for instance, who send cards. I said, hey, might I recommend that instead of sending a card, because once you read the card and it may go in a file or it may go in the, the animal scrapbook or whatever, th there's two books that I love and it's for every dog and angel. I'm sorry. Well, that is one I love, but it's, it's a dog heaven and cat heaven. And I love okay. those two books. And I said, they're, while they are, they're kind of meant for children, they are perfect for big kids, big kids, meaning you and I. And so those are the ones that you can kind of get out and, and look at again and read again. Of course, my book is awesome. Dr. Alan Wolfelt has an amazing book that I love to give to um, and, and to, to give to people that they can turn to and, you know, and, and read at their own at their own pace and do do whatever they need to do at their own pace. Thanks, Joe. I just am There's such a new a, business for you, Joe. I know. right? <laughs> Let us know when you have it all together and we'll buy from you. Yes. Yes. Oh my goodness. Yeah. But, but pulling all those things together and, and like I said, you know what I love right now and I'm doing it for graduation gifts, you know, they out on Pinterest and I'm a Pinterest freak. They've mm -hmm. got all of, yeah, they've got all of those really cool things that you do to put in a, you just put them in a, in a mason jar, in a canning jar. And so you can put the entire soup ingredients in there with a special little note around it. And there's your care package right there. And it's a, a beautiful, you know, minestrone or a beautiful, you know, pot of vegetable soup or whatever. I just thought of something on the care package, Joe, listen up on this. On the <laughs> care package, you have a note that is around the, the soup jar that says your dog wanted to know you remained healthy or your dog wanted to know you were nourished. You were continued to be yeah. okay. Something like yeah. that. A note from your dog to make sure you're healthy or, or cat or, or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Yep. There you go. Yep. I love, I love that. that. Yeah. You know, you know what else I remember? The anniversary date of Miko's death, 
I was had some friends in the funeral business uh, at a Jewish funeral home in Chicago. Mm-hmm. And of course, um, Jewish tradition for your site, right? Mm-hmm. For your site, they sent me a candle on the anniversary date of her yeah. death with the, you know, and I'm Catholic. And so gave me some your site instructions. And I, I still have that candle up here to this day that I think those are also give me a little votive, a little special votive and some poems to read, some things to say, and mm-hmm. just sit in quiet reflection. Yeah, right. Yeah. I, I think Joe's off on another business here. Yeah, I know. I, I started. I see that. Yeah, we should talk afterwards, Joe. <laughs> we'll, we'll help to promote it. We want to be a wholesaler. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, well, you know, those are... Um, no matter how you look at it, when you come to your pets, they're, they're, they're family. And I don't think that a lot of people give it a lot of thought. So these are incredible resources. Yeah. Uh, I just I just love being a co-host on, on the show with you. You bring so much to the table all the time. Uh, what are the final words that you want to tell people about remembering their pets? So let's talk about remembering their pets. The final thing I want you to do is I want you to, I want you to, well, use me as a resource, okay? Because many a times it's the area of what can I do to honor them? They don't know what they don't know. And every day, interestingly enough, every day my space of memorialization and and what people can do changes. It changes. It's fascinating. And so what I like to do is really listen and, and to have people share with me what they want to do, and then I can help them create. So that's number one. Number two, just like Joe did, you know, stepping up and saying, hey, the next time that I hear it, it, an acquaintance of mine, a friend of mine, a family member of mine, and let me tell you something, whenever I see one of my acquaintances or friends or a family member on most times I find out about it on Facebook. If I don't get a text, man, I grab my book off the shelf and I send that and I send a note and, and that's my care package that goes out that says just sending you a little love and, and, and hugs from me. So now it's kind of like, let's do something for them. So they feel the love and they feel the support and we wrap them in our arms and help to make space for them. You know what, Colleen, we forgot one picture. We did what, Oh my gosh, look at that. Yeah. So here is this here. Speaking of thinking outside the box. Okay. So this is an artist. And if anybody wants to go search her, her name is F B last name is fog F O G G. She's out of Muncie, Indiana down F B fog.com F B fog.com. Now, let me tell you something. This, this piece that you're looking at right here, this is a sculpture of my little guy, Crisco. And he does have his angel wings now, so he uh, he can have those. Yep. Now, here is the interesting thing about these products. They are made out of paper mache. And I don't know about any of you, but my paper mache never looked like this. I can assure <laughs> you. So what you cannot see with this little piece is that right under his little neck, there's actually the head actually comes off from the body. OK, but she blends it in. So it just looks like hair. And the, the, the um, body of this piece is hollow. And so it's hmm. actually an urn. So you can make a wow. piece. Yes. You can make a piece that wow. looks. Oh, Kathy, change at F-O-G-G. I did. Oh, F-O-G-G? Oh, you did. F-O-G-G. Yeah. Okay. F-B Fog, F-O-G-G. And she, I know once our viewers go out there and look at her site, you will recognize her artwork because she is a, she is an amazing artist, but all you have to do now, here's what I tell families. Okay. These are whimsical, whimsical interpretations of your animals. So things are going to look whimsical, not exact. If you want exact, do not go to FB Fog. Okay, because yeah. these are beautiful, whimsical representations. And, and and the reason I say that is because, well, let's just say, for instance, what if Crisco had a big old black spot right here on his head? Then she would have that there. This one actually really, truly looks like him. But we did get some back that, you know, they, they're whimsical interpretations, guys. Mm-hmm. But she is an amazing artist. Amazing artist. So that's, that's a beautiful place to leave this, too. Because if you're saying, hey, I don't want a traditional urn. Yeah, I want right. something that actually looks like my animal from from resin to bronze to paper mache to ceramic. 
I can find you any artist within those mediums that will make it, that will make a, an urn to look exactly like your animal. Okay. Well, then How about I'm, that? I'm gonna. That sounds fantastic. I'm gonna show this this little video. This is just oh. ju just to have us remember that we love our dogs dearly, and that we absolutely. There we go. Uh -oh. That's it. I love it. Okay. I love it. What a beautiful way to end today, Kathy. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Thank, you, thank you, girlfriend, for uh, always being just the, the perfect element. You know, folks, I want you to know that we don't rehearse any of this. This is all off the cuff. And I think that the synergy and the blend that we have is just fantastic. So I admire you immensely. And I will see you after the because you're going to be gone for Labor Day, right? Yes. Yep. Okay. So, so it'll be after. the following Friday after that, that we'll be back. And you'll see the next time you see me, I'll be in my new studio and my new home. So I'm excited. Yay. I love it. Uh, Thanks, everybody for being here. Have fun. Thanks, Joe. Appreciated your energy today. Thank you very much. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Bye, Mama. Thanks, guys. Bye, okay. Kathy. Bye. Bye, honey.